What's going on guys, it's your boy Brad and I'm back with another video and in this video what I want to do is I want to give you guys some tips, some advice on how to study for med surge. Specifically learning these pathophysiologies and these various disease processes that you have to learn in med surge. Before I get into the video, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already. I'm putting out videos every week on this channel trying to help you guys obtain your dream. Of becoming a registered nurse so if you're in nursing school you can pretty much already uh tell that med surge is a very important class they break it up into like two three sometimes even four courses med surge one two three etc the majority of the NCLEX is based from med surge and really that's the big chunk of information that you're going to need to carry forward with you whenever you begin practicing on the floor. So it's very important to learn this and learn it inside and out. I get a lot of messages from people saying, uh, Brad, you know, I'm having difficulties learning these pathophysiologies. The pathophysiology is killing me. I get that stuff all the time. Hopefully these tips right here are gonna help you really get a nice structure of how to study these different disease processes and learn and retain this information. So what I want to do is I want to give you guys a nice structured way of learning these disease processes and I'm going to give it to you through the form of an example and you can take this structure and apply it to any disease process and if you follow these steps you will learn the disease process, you will be able to retain it and you'll be acing those exams and more importantly remembering this stuff when it comes time to practice in the field. So the example that I want to give you guys, the one that I'm going to use in this video is heart failure. So the first step in approaching these disease processes is the anatomy and the physiology. That is why paying attention in A and P is so crucial because it's the foundation of your nursing knowledge. You need to know how the body works and uh, functions. And so specifically, whenever you're approaching these disease processes, let's talk about heart failure. You need to know the anatomy and the physiology of the heart the cardiovascular system. So you need to know the various structures of the heart, the atria, the ventricles, etc. And then you also need to know the physiology, how the heart pumps the blood through the pulmonary system, becomes oxygenated, comes back into the heart, gets pumped to the rest of the body. You need to know these things because you need to know how the heart works in a healthy individual on a normal basis, how this uh, cardiovascular system functions in order to be able to recognize the pathology heart failure, to be able to notice these abnormal. So that is why you need to make sure that you have a good firm foundation of the anatomy and physiology. So since we're using this, this uh, example of heart failure, let me give you a quick rundown. Uh, you have two atria and you have two ventricles. You basically can break the heart up into a right and a left side. The right side is what you can consider your pulmonary side and the left side you can consider your systemic side. The blood comes in through the right atria from the in superior and inferior vena cava, pours into the right ventricle, and this is all deoxygenated blood because it's just come from the body. And the right ventricle pumps the blood up through the pulmonary arteries into the lungs. Blood becomes oxygenated. The blood comes back to the heart via the pulmonary veins into the left atria. Then it goes into the left ventricle, and the left ventricle, which is the main pump of the heart, pumps the blood through the aorta into the rest of the body. You need to know that. So the second step of studying for med surge involves the pathology, the pathophysiology. What is going wrong in this particular disease process, whatever it is. So for heart failure, what's happening? The myocardium, the muscle portion of the heart is becoming weakened. It is now ineffectively pumping blood from the left ventricle to the rest of the body. It's becoming weakened, it could have become uh, too elastic, whatever it might be, it could have become hypertrophic. Over time, it will become hypertrophic. The muscle of the left ventricle will become thickened from having to work even harder to pump blood out to the rest of the body. Just like any muscle, you work it too much, the muscle gets bigger. And so that also becomes problematic with heart failure because if the muscle of the left ventricle becomes bigger, the volume of blood that can be held inside of it becomes smaller. So you have left bl less blood in the left ventricle that gets pumped to the rest of the body on top of an already weak myocardium. I could go into a lot more depth with that pathophysiology. You guys can look that up if you want to. I don't want this video to be 30 minutes long, um, but it's very interesting stuff if you want to look that up. But anyways, the pathophysiology, that's your next portion. You need to study that and know it very in depth and know why really ask the question and make sure you can answer it why is this happening within the body whatever the disease process is the third step of studying med surge of studying these diseases 
are the signs and symptoms? What are the clinical manifestations that the patient is going to present with? What are you going to see in the patient? If we're talking about heart failure, uh, they used to break it up into right-sided and left-sided heart failure. Now it's just kind of under the broad category of heart failure because one eventually leads to the other in most cases. What you could be looking at is whenever blood and fluid backs up into the pulmonary system, you're looking at pulmonary congestion. If you're auscultating the lungs, you'll be hearing a lot of crackles. The patient has fluid in their lungs, so they're essentially, you can, you can think of it as they're drowning in their own uh, plasma. So you're going, they're going to be very dyspneic. They're going to have a rapid respiratory rate. You could see... Um, uh, blood, blood tinged or frothy sputum, distended jugular veins, ascites, fluid collection in the peritoneal cavity. You could see hepatomegaly, enlargement of the liver, um, edema, especially edema um, of the upper and lower extremities, things like that that are indicative of heart failure. These are the things that you are now able to see. The fourth piece that you want to look at are your labs and diagnostics. <clears throat> what diagnostic procedures are typically associated with the particular disease what labs are you do you expect to be elevated or decreased or just abnormal uh, in patients who have these various diseases for uh, labs for a patient with heart failure <clears throat> the primary indic indicative lab value is your bnp brain or b type natriuretic peptide it's a hormone made by the ventricles of the lung of the lungs of the heart <laughs> in response to an increase after load and so um, <laughs> the ventricles release BNP which is you know it acts as a vasodilator trying to reduce the after load trying to reduce the cardiac workload um, like I said I could go into mad depth with this um, but I'm gonna spare y'all anyways BNP so that's that's a big uh, lab value a big lab that you guys would need to know with heart failure so you know like i said apply that same concept to whatever disease process you're studying what labs are pertinent to the disease process and then you look at diagnostics what diagnostic tests are uh you know important for diagnosing uh different conditions so you know you could look at an echocardiogram for instance with uh, heart failure you know get a look at the, at the heart get a look at the myocardium is that left ventricle um, you know, becoming hyper hypertrophic, uh, just different things like that. So different lab values, different diagnostic procedures that are pertinent to that particular disease process. The fifth thing, what medications would you expect this patient to be receiving? And not only that, but why? That is the biggest thing. You have to ask why. So various medications that we're talking about, we're talking about cardiac medications for patients who are in heart failure. They've got all this excess fluid on them. And the heart is just having to work very hard in order to pump blood out of the body. I mean, out of the heart to the rest of the body. So, <clears throat> you know, you'd be looking at some ACE inhibitors, some uh, angiotensin receptor blockers, because that's a, a mechanism that is uh, being initiated. The renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, that's a mechanism that's being initiated with heart failure. So you'd be given ACE inhibitors, uh, ARBs. You'd be given some diuretics, you know, um, hydrochlorothiazide, maybe Lasix, maybe spironolactone, depending on your patient's situation and their lab values, but really trying to get that extra fluid off of the lungs, off of the uh, systemic circuit with that edema, for instance. So they'd be getting that, it might be getting digoxin because with uh, heart failure, you know, they can become tachycardic, the heart's beating harder, trying to get blood to the body. So, um, you know, give them the jocks and really slow down that heart rate, increase the force of contraction, just trying the best to uh, increase the preload so that more blood can be distributed to the body. So really looking at the medications that the patient is on is very important and you probably get pounded with that kind of information on the NCLEX, so you wanna know it. And last but not least, this is kind of a miscellaneous tip, something that I just think would be important. It'd be good knowledge to know, definitely something that you should know. You, you may get tested on it as well. Patient education, that's the last tip. You wanna know what to educate your patient on. And really in order to do that, and that's why this is kind of the last uh, tip of mine, is that in order to be able to educate your patient, you need to know all of that other information above that we started with. You need to know how to educate them on, well, first of all, the pathophysiology, why, why they're experiencing the things that they're experiencing. You know, they ask you, why can't I breathe? Why do I? Why are my uh, feet swollen like they are? Things like that. You need to be educated enough to be able to answer these questions. And you also need to teach them, you know, well, for heart failure, um, for instance, 
dietary uh, things, you know, really restricting the sodium. And uh, if they are uh, being hospitalized, restricting fluid intake, uh, that's just going to kind of compound the situation. Uh, but you really want to just have a good general knowledge of different things that you can do to educate your patient on how to prevent uh, reoccurrences of whatever the disease is, if it's, you know, an acute situation or how to manage a chronic situation, for instance, if you have a diabetic patient, how can you educate them on their disease process and, you know, just various things like that, various facets of the disease. So to recap, guys, follow this structure of studying for med search and you will be much better off. Number one, know the anatomy and physiology. That's the foundation of everything that you learn in nursing school in regards to med surge diseases. Number two, the pathophysiology. Understand what's abnormal, what is different from the norm. You know, what is going on in the patient's body that is abnormal, the patho, you gotta know it. The third thing is the signs and symptoms, the clinical manifestations. What, does, what will the patient with this disease process present with? Four, labs and diagnostics. What labs will you expect to be abnormal with a patient with whatever disease it is and what diagnostic procedures can be used to diagnose uh, these diseases? Fifth one, what medications can you expect your patient to be receiving? And I should have mentioned this also, but not all disease processes, everything under the sun has to be treated pharmacologically. It could also be other treatments in general. It doesn't have to be medications. So what treatments would you expect this patient to be receiving? And last but not least, patient education. I really hope this video helped guys. I promise you, if you study these diseases in that order, you will really, I mean, seriously, you'll be making A's, man. You just have to really ask why. You have to be an inquisitive and curious mind to, to really excel your game to another level. You really do. Don't just take it for what it is. Please don't just take it for what it is. If I could tell you anything, don't just be like, oh, patient has heart failure and so he's going to have fluid in his lungs and not know why. Patient's going to receive uh, <laughs> ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers and not know why. That kills me. That's a big pet peeve of mine. So please ask the question why. You will be much better off for it. Anyways, guys, I'm done rambling. I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, subscribe if you haven't. And uh, I'll catch you on the next video, man. It's Nurse Bass, soon to be. Have a good one. Peace.